consider we have this connection where one axially loaded element is connecting to say a column by a gasset plate. Here we use pin to connect the axial member to the gasset plate. We want to see what kind of stresses are developed in this connection. The first stress is simply the stress developed in the axially loaded member, like this. So the stress is normal because the force is perpendicular to the cross section. And I need to consider the entire the cross section area of the entire axially loaded member, the entire red element. Now let me consider this case. This is a similar kind of stress, but here we are talking about a section which passes through the pen. There should be a hole in the axially loaded element. So the area of this red element is smaller in that section compared to the previous section that we discussed. What does it mean? Smaller area gives me higher stress because the force is the same. The same force should pass through that element. When I reduce the area, the stress increases. So this section is more critical. This is what we call it the critical section that has higher stress. Does that make sense? All right, but this is again normal stress. Now let me consider this stress. When we have one element resting on another element, we call that bearing stress. So this is the bearing stress. Bearing stress is actually a kind of normal stress. It's a family, is a member of that family. And finally, there is another stress which is developed in the pen. Remember, stresses are developed in different elements. Here, this stress is developed inside the pen. The force is parallel to that cross-section area, so that is shear stress. These stresses on top are all normal stress, and the bottom one is shear stress. Um, in this problem, the axial loaded element has the width of 10 inch and the thickness of half inch, and the pen has a diameter of 3 quarter of inch. So we need to determine three kinds of stresses. First, let me determine normal stress. In the normal stress, we learned that this is a critical section. So let me determine area and force, then divide force by area. How much is internal force? P or F is 120 kips is equal to 120,000 pounds. What area should I consider in my calculation? Let me look at that from front view. If I look at that from front view, I would see this. Should I consider the entire area of that red element? Or I should subtract the whole from that? We should subtract it, all right? So I will consider the hatched area or the red area. So that would be simply the thickness times the effective width. Effective width is the width minus the hole. The thickness is half inch, and the effective width is 10 inch minus 3 quarter of inch. So that gives me 4.625. All right, how much is stress? Is simply force over area. Let me plug the value, and that gives me 25,950 pound per square inch, which is 25,950 PSI. In the second step, you want to determine how much stress developed in the pen. How much is force? Same as before, because the entire force should pass through that pen. 120,000 pounds. How much is the area? What is the area that I should consider in my analysis? Here, the cross-section area has a circular shape, as we see here, because the area of pen is transferring that load. So that has a diameter of 3 quarter of inch, the area of a circle is pi d squared over 4, and if I plug the values, that gives me 0.441 squared inch. The rest of that would be easy. Divide force by area, that gives us stress. That gives me 271,600 PSI. Any questions for this part? All right, last step. Determining bearing stress. The same amount of force is applied, 120,000 pounds. The cross-section area is tricky. Listen very carefully to this part. What is the area that I need to consider in my calculation? To be accurate, we need to consider the area of this curved shape. But we don't know if the stress is uniformly distributed on that part. To be on the safe side, we consider just this area. So if I look at that from the front view, I will consider this rectangle area, which has the lowest area in that curved part. Okay, how much is that? That is thickness times diameter. So the area used for bearing a stress is diameter times thickness. 
Diameter is a true quarter of inch, thickness is half inch, that gives me 3 eighths squared inch. Last step is the easiest one, divide force by area, that gives us 220,000 PSI.